Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 108 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Right now we're in the middle of frame production. We've already replaced the keel timber of the boat and done a lot of deconstruction. We've lofted the boat out and we're slowly changing her shape, pulling her back to her original design. Because she's had some really bad luck over the years, uh, nearly been wrecked and been left ashore for a long time. And so her shape has sagged and changed. So we're trying to pull that back to the original design. Alright guys, so this week we've got uh, another visitor and this is James Wright Hi. and um, James is another YouTuber with uh, many YouTube channels apparently <laughs> <laughs> but his main channel is Wood by Wright uh, where he teaches people about hand tools, is that right? Yeah, I restore hand tools, use them, teach about how to do that as well as making furniture and other things. Thanks a lot for coming to help out. My pleasure. Uh, I think we're going to have to put you on some power tools I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> cool. So once the new frames are all cut, uh, then we bring them inside the boat. But at this stage, I haven't yet cut the bottom corners of the heel of the frame because I want to make sure that they fit exactly. So I offer them up like this. I'll put the laser level here in a second and that'll mean I can make sure that they're straight and plumb all the way to the top. 
Now the les level is set up and the frames are perfectly plumb, I can take measurements from the marks I've made on the frames to see exactly how deep I need to cut the notch and if I have to trim any wood off the um, horizontal face of the heel of the frame uh, in order to make the frames perfectly in line with the water lines and the buttock lines in terms of their distance away from the centre line and their vertical height in relation to the water lines. So this is a very simple jig that I put together which basically just allows me to finish off the face of the um, bottom of the heel of the frames and I can draw the lines on the side and I can line this jig up to exactly where I want it and then I just put these little blocks on and then run the router over the top of these. Of course this could be done with a saw but as the line that I'm trying to get to is often very close to the line that I've cut already it's quite hard to take off that small amount with a saw and this gives me a very precise and easy way to get what I want quite accurately. Now I take one of these long 2x10s um, which I've already planed completely flat on one side and I've already marked as well the centre line on it and the distance out to the edge of the frames on load line A which is where I'm putting these beams. So now I've just got to trim off the ends a little bit so they'll fit in the right place around the planks and then I'll slot this into position and clamp it up and dry fit everything to see if it all fits. So I've been spending a little bit of time getting these two frame sets which are already in the boat in the correct position. Now I've got them in position, um, I've put some blocks to make sure that I can put them back there and I'm now going to remove these frames and bed down the heels of the frames into the keel timber. So I've already painted the pockets in the keel with the rot inhibiting paint and I've also painted the bottom face and inside face of the heels of the frames 
and now I'm just putting a little bit of this bedding compound in here and this is actually dolphinite which is a marine bedding compound but honestly I'd be just as happy to use um, regular linseed oil putty except that it seems to be quite hard to find over here without having lots of additives in it so this stuff's pretty good it's a little bit more expensive and I've mixed it with a bit of pine tar which I've always known as Stockholm tar in the UK it's made from uh, burning pine trees and that process gets you pine tar and charcoal and it's um, been used to treat wood for centuries especially in Scandinavia it does inhibit rot to some extent but really the main purpose of putting it with this dolphinite is just to make it a little bit sloppier and that just means it will squeeze out of this joint a bit more easily because it's quite a tight joint you can also thin this stuff I think with regular linseed oil but pine tar does uh, have that slight rot inhibiting quality as well and it smells like a real old Danish fishing boat or something which is quite nice actually this smell reminds me very strongly of my apprenticeship in Bristol where we used to coat everything with a mix of Stockholm tar, linseed oil and turpentine I've been a bit generous with this because it's quite soft it'll all squeeze out that should be more than enough and now I'm going to actually put the frame into that pocket where hopefully it'll stay Alright so it's been a pretty good week, 
Uh, got quite a lot done, got three sets of frames in the boat now. And I really feel like we should be getting the frames in faster, but to be honest, every frame we do, we are learning how to do it faster, do it better, do it more accurately, and we're really developing the processes. And I think it's worth putting the time in to get those processes efficient because, you know, there's 44 sets of frames in the boat. That's 88 frames. Uh, most of them are double sawn, so, you know, you're looking at several hundred futtocks. Um, so it, it's worth getting it right. We've had some cool help. Uh, it was cool to have James Wright here helping for a couple of days. Um, he's great and you should uh, check out his YouTube channel. And I think it's only fair for me to mention a few of my other favorite YouTube channels, specifically the boat building ones, um, especially as a few of them have uh, shouted out my channel and helped me grow this channel from absolutely nothing uh, just over a year ago. So you guys should definitely check out Doug at SV Seeker. Uh, they do some really interesting stuff, a lot of metal work, it's a big steel boat. Um, Acorn to Arabella, they're great guys and they're building a, a new wooden boat. Of course, Louis at Tips from a Shipwright is a very experienced boat builder and uh, he's got some really uh, good advice for people. And then Salt and Tar is an interesting channel. I think they're nearly ready to launch. And um, a few of the other ones I've come across, uh, Building Brew Peg is worth checking out for sure. Uh, the Sea Dreamer project is really interesting. And Sail Life is uh, restoring a fiberglass boat, and that's pretty interesting too. And I know there's a few more that I am forgetting right now. So just check in the video description just below, and uh, it's gonna give you links to the channels I've mentioned, and probably a few more of my favorites, which I'm gonna remember later. So under this big tarp is the ship saw, and so we've completely covered it, um, we've greased it, we've cleaned it, we've also tilted it so that the bottom wheel is well out of the pit just in case it rains a lot and the pit gets some water in it. And you can also see that all the timber has been stacked up neatly and covered with tarp, so um, that's protected from the rain and the sun as well while I'm away. It's been fun, Yeah. you know? If anyone's thinking of coming down, it's like woodworking camp, you know? <laughs> it's, a, it's a great time. This is definitely like a rewarding yeah. uh, vacation for sure. Yeah. yeah, and you've been, you know, extremely helpful, so I, I appreciate it. I try to be. I, <laughs> I tried my hardest. <laughs> all right, well, this is it. We've uh, packed everything up. We've uh, covered all the timber. And now Checker and I are heading back to the UK for a couple of weeks. The uh, wonderful summer we've had here has just ended, it seems. It's raining now, and so it's quite a good time to leave, although I'm sure England won't be any nicer. And uh, when I get back, I'll be um, completing the frames in the centre section of the boat, and then I'll be um, replacing the rest of the centre line forward and aft, and then replacing the frames in those areas as well. So of course there's a huge amount still to do, but the uh, project's going well, and it's going particularly well thanks to all you guys for watching and helping out and um, just giving me loads of wonderful support. So that's it for now, but thanks for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise contributed towards the Tally Ho project. It does make a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so I really appreciate it. And I'm gonna keep making videos while I'm back in England, so I'll see you guys next time. Uh, we're gonna be having a look around some boatyards in England and some traditional English shipbuilding and sailing, hopefully. All right, cheers.